work with scraps, use upcycled materials, use your stash, shop the sales. These savings ideas we know, and they're great ideas. But what else is there? What do you do when you want to sew, you want to quilt, but you have literally no budget? There are times when budgets shift and we need to divert money away from our beloved hobby. Maybe it's saving for a vacation or a move. Maybe there's a new baby on the way or an unexpected medical bill. Maybe, like us, last year, it's an unexpected job change. Here are six unconventional methods that I use to keep quilting when I have little to no budget. Number six is my all-time favorite, and it might just surprise you. Hi, I'm Amy, and I make things. Today, I'm making quilting dollars stretch as far as possible. Hang around, I'll show you how. The most important thing I have to do when the budget tightens, either by choice or by circumstance, is to stop. Give myself some grace, breathe, and focus on what I can do and not how I'm limited. My first tip is to try hand piecing. English paper piecing, traditional or applique, you do not need to purchase papers for your EPP shapes. You can make a template and trace them onto junk mail. Hand piecing requires simply needle, thread, and a pencil. Again, you can trace your own templates onto cardboard and away you go. Portable, practical, soothing, mindful. But the reason that hand piecing or applique is number one on this list is that it slows me down. It prolongs the enjoyment. I get more value over time by working slowly on one project, but also austere budget times are often, well, like job searching for five months, very stressful. And taking the time to focus intently on a slow stitching process gave me a place to both enjoy my creative outlet and rest my mind from hypervigilance and stress. I started this quilt during that time. These little string blocks and hand applique got me through some really dark days. Sometimes I just needed to focus on doing one thing and doing it well, and then it stayed finished. It gave me some place to put any anxiety or fear or to set it aside. Also, this leads nicely to method number two. Hand piecing goes hand in hand with hand quilting. Here again, this leverages both cost over time and a mindful slow process. You still quilt, you still enjoy beautiful fabrics and the community, and you get to do it for longer. This doesn't need to be fancy hand quilting. This is not fancy. I, you know I use what I call my lazy girl method of hand quilting. Hand quilting gives me a place for my mind to rest and I move a project toward the finish line, which is win-win in my book. Plus, plus, it's so pretty. Okay, number three. If handwork isn't your jam or isn't possible for you, consider volunteering for a local chapter of Project Linus or other quilt-related charity. Most of them are in dire need for people to work on every aspect of the quilting process, from cutting kits, piecing tops, layering, basting, all the way through to binding. This is a great way to continue your process and help your community. And if your extreme budget is caused by something stressful, I find for myself the best way to prevent or to reset my mental spiral is to stop focusing on my circumstance and think about and help someone else. Number four, along those same lines, you can volunteer to finish other people's UFOs. Sometimes I am over a project and it needs to go be part of someone else's to-do list, or I might need an angel quilter to finish something for me if I've become ill or had an emergency, but still have a deadline. Ask around in your guild or quilt bee or online community if anyone has any lingering UFOs. Nobody has anything like that, I'm sure. But if they have anything that you can finish, 
This is especially useful if you are a newer quilter without lots of stash or UFOs of your own. And it's a great way to gain experience working on a project with new methods or techniques you haven't tried. You get both the creative outlet of getting to quilt and the joy of helping your fellow quilter finish their project. Number five, if your budget is not on lockdown but merely reduced for a time and you have the money for one new project, how do you choose? Let's go back and remember that cost over time concept. Think about choosing a rather complicated pattern. If it has small pieces, that's even better because this will take longer to cut, to sew, and thereby prolong the enjoyment. I managed a yarn store when our kids were little and I learned there that I could stretch my budget because who has money when you have two small kids? but by knitting a complicated lace pattern with very fine yarn. That $40 or $50 initial investment would keep me busy for months due to the complexity of the pattern and the size of the project. And the same holds true with quilting. I can bang out a pre-cut based quilt in a day, but complicated hand or machine applique or a pattern with thousands of tiny little pieces will keep my hands and my mind occupied for much longer, making the enjoyment over time investment work in my favor. And finally, number six. It's not sexy, but it is my favorite, and it's this. Finish what you have. See, I told you. But it's true. When budgets tighten for whatever reason, this is a fantastic time to pull out those UFOs and finish what you've started. Be sure and find the projects that are stalled because of distraction or boredom or needing to find your seam ripper and not the ones where you ran out of fabric or need to make a purchase to complete it. That defeats the purpose entirely. Most of us have those projects that are kitted up, nearly finished, waiting for inspiration to strike or need a correction before moving forward. Dig them out. Dig them out of the back of the closet in the bottom of your bin and the space under your ironing board. I see you. I see you. <laughs> and work on them now with renewed vigor and purpose. Love them and give them credit and gratitude for helping you through what might be a difficult time or, you know, just celebrate them for helping you reach a savings goal. Make friends with your UFOs and let them move you forward. Finally, I want to say this, and it's super important. Extreme budgets are hard at the best of times. When we went five months searching for a job and riding the roller coaster of emotions that that was, there were times I could not find my creative spirit. Sometimes survival mode takes all the energy you can muster, and that is when giving yourself grace, remembering to breathe, and focusing on what you can do and not how you are limited is most critical. Some days, many days, that was flipping through books or magazines, texting with friends, chatting with people during the YouTube live streams. And that was good enough. The community was a true lifeline for me and it's always there. So next time your budget shifts because you need a new roof or you're saving for that dream vacation. Try one of these six methods to feed your creative cravings without busting your budget. Don't forget to breathe and never forget that you make the world more beautiful just by being in it. I'm Amy and I'll see you next time.